Hi there, and welcome to Soundpaint. Welcome to Soundpaint 3.1. This is a brand new update that perhaps more than any is an homage to the underlying mantra in Soundpaint, which is to shorten the distance from a creative thought to the actual creation. And the best way to describe that in Soundpaint is normally that instruments load super fast, they have a wicked high fidelity, you have access to everything in the fastest way possible, Everything you're doing in terms of modulation is also based on how can I get from A to B in the fastest way possible. But for me, using creative software, and I'm sure for you guys as well, is often a burden and a slew of hindrances, particularly using DOS. There's so many things like, oh my God, why can't I get there faster? So for us in building Soundpaint, it's not just the experience of working with the instruments or building them, but it's also technical things about like downloading instruments. How fast can I download them? Why do I need to open up another application and sit and wait for that or registration codes, whatever? Can I just get what I want in the fastest way possible as well? So we've done that. In this update here, we've taken the downloader and built it into the application itself. And that's what I want to show in this video here. Essentially, every freebie we've ever made is available right off the bat. You can just go in the downloader, click them, download while you're using the engine as well. Essentially, constantly just being in the creative flow. So let me show how it works. In Soundpaint 3.1, we've added three new icons to the top left of the UI. First of all, you'll find our tried and true settings here, account, audio media settings. We have UI preferences here. If you don't know this one, I keep coming back to it, but you can actually adjust the font size of everything inside of the UI. You now also have access to our sample importer up here. So if you click on the pen here, you'll open our sample editor for you to import your own samples and create your own instruments that way. It takes all sort of audio formats. You just drag them in here and they'll automatically get populated on the UI here. So for example, if I click on this wave file here, I now have a wave editor at my hand. Let's say I wanna go in here and really sort of precision dial this particular attack here. I can really go close into every sample of the waveform and get it exactly where I want it. And I can do that for each of the individual waveforms here and then always click my favorite button, autofill, and now it's filled out over the entire keyboard. I just wanted to show you that because this is a particular add-on we've done in terms of making the wave editor a little more precise here for 3.1. But most importantly, we have our new download in here as well. This is the third icon over here, marked with a cloud. Now you'll notice there's a little number up here and this number will vary based on how many things are available. For example, if we have new updates available, if we have new freebies available, it'll all show up as the number, just like you see on your phone as well when there's an update or something available. So let's click here on the cloud. You'll notice up here the first thing is that you can search your instruments. So let's just say that I wanna check like how many guitars I have available or how many like synthesizers I have available. We can see which ones are installed or which ones I haven't downloaded yet as well. There's a button down here called Download, Update, Install, Everything. If you click that, it will install and update every single library that's available to you. So I encourage you to do that if you just wanna be up to date with anything at any point. You'll notice over here to the right that we have different kind of filters. So for example, if I click free here, it's gonna show all the freebies available. And again, in the same fashion, which one have I downloaded and which ones are installed already. And every time we add a new freebie, it's just automatically gonna be added in here. You don't have to go to the website anymore and add to cart and all that. It should really just be the shortest way possible. And that is just to open the engine, go into the downloader and they're available right there. And just as a secret little side note, we actually have a new version coming out soon where users will be able to share their samples as well. We just wanna to continue to expand upon this ecosystem. But for now, you have all our commercial instruments and all our free instruments available, but we also wanna make the downloader here, the system where users can share all their samples, particularly in our Discord community where a lot of people are sharing sample banks and creating new beautiful instruments. And we just wanna make this sonic encyclopedia of sounds, if you will. Now, you may have noticed that something that says accent here, guitar triggers. Accent is a new category of sounds that we've created. You may have noticed in Soundpaint that we both have program part, attack and release here as different part categories. For me, the first thing that hits the ear is the attack. And I often wonder why no developers have treated the attack with more care. So our new accent category up here and our new guitar triggers is an homage to that. So we essentially sat down and played a variety of guitars or stringed instruments and just captured the attack of them. That means that you can take that attack and superimpose it on a piano or another instrument and really get a unique sound of it. 
Think about a snare. What really defines a snare is that very first hit and then the rest sort of becomes noise. The ear hears the attack first. So this is really an homage to that. And we have several libraries coming out in this sort of accent category. It's kind of remarkable what you can do with it. So we're kicking it off here with 3.1 by adding our first free accent libraries here called Guitar Triggers. And just follow this video to the end. Like there's so much beautiful stuff you can do with them. Now, the third filter option here in our downloader is our updates. This is where you can see if there's any updates available. We can also read here like what's in the particular update here. And we can click on the update button here. And if you notice like how quick it is, it's only updating the programs or the parts or in case we have new samples, it'll do that as well. But while I've been talking this little blurb here, we're already good. It's already installed. It's already inside of the engine here. So for example, I just uploaded our saxophone. So if I go in here and look at our saxophone, it should show up with all the beautiful subdirectories here. And there it is neatly organized in different categories, arcs, key switches, legatos, sustains, and all that stuff. When we do these updates, it's really going back in time and looking at all the beautiful releases we've had for sound paint, but all the new technologies we've learned since then and deploy them in here and just update them. Like you can see how quick it is. Like this is all real time. It took a few seconds and you're already good to go. And now the number only says one here because we've updated everything we should. And the one probably relates to the fact that we've not downloaded the new freebie here, our Accent Guitar Triggers. Let's just click download here. I'm going to put it in my sound paint libraries folders here. And one of the sweetest aspects about the engine is that I can be inside making music while the downloader is doing its thing. And when it's done, the library is going to be available. For example, right now, I just got a notification here. Congrats. I've unlocked a bucket load of hidden gems because I just installed our free accent guitar triggers library. And speaking of that, let me just lock it down here and switch to that part here. And voila, sure enough, we have a new accent category here with a new accent guitar trigger library. So I just want to show you a variety of different instruments where we put different attacks on them and just to shape the unique character of them. It's remarkable. So that's Sound Paint 3.1. But as I mentioned, we've also released a new freebie with this release. The freebie is actually a whole new category of sounds that we call accents. Accents are unique, smaller sounds that we can superimpose on existing instruments to change the character of them with a particular emphasis on the attack and release of those sounds. So in this next proportion of the video, I want to demonstrate our new Accent Guitar Triggers library, which is all small sounds that are designed to be superimposed on existing sounds. We have a variety of programs here and a variety of parts where I'm going to demonstrate how much you can change the character, the timbre of an instrument just by modifying the attack or release of the sound. So let's get into it. This program is my favorite program in the entire collection here. I took this modified dulcimer. It has a very pinpointed kind of attack, a little bit like the old school harpsichord. I went in and looked for harpsichord sounds because I felt that would relate to the attack here. And I found this beautiful one here coming from our mellow library. This is a sort of modern interpretation of the Mellotron. We ran everything through real tape and got real like wobbly and old school. So that's a, I think that's a CP70 electric piano, but you combine the attack trigger. And then I added a DX7 harpsichord sound on top and combined, it's just the best like fat 80s kind of sound. Now let's remove the elements again here. Let me just remove the attack trigger first. It does add something. Let me remove one of the harpsichords. And the very prominent DX7 as well. But that initial attack up here really does help shape the color of the instrument. And it's kind of weird because the attack is so short, but when I remove the attack, it feels like the whole sound is changed, even the part that sustains. And you know, it's powerful when you add acoustic resources to something that's more like synthy or stiff. This is a DX7 attempted jazz guitar. It does sound kind of synthy. Not so jazz guitars, but it has a little bit. 
Now, if we start adding attack and release triggers to it, we get a little more life in the sound, a little more electroacoustic behavior. For example, just adding a little bit of a release trigger from a dulcimer. You hear that on the end? It's not that much, but... We add a little bit of a muted Telecaster on top. It's not totally a jazz guitar, but it's getting a little more alive. And then let's add more of a release trigger also coming from the Telecaster. And for me, I feel this one is really like picking up on the release triggers. Here's another example using a sitar and then using banjo and electric ukulele attack and release triggers to it. Let me play here with the sitar in its own right. And adding the banjo pluck. And without. And with. It just adds that initial hit. And then adding a little bit of that gooey, electric, sticky kind of sound underneath. And if we dial down the sitar here, we have this. The attack and the release state of a banjo and an electric ukulele. A really obvious way of demonstrating the power of the attack is to take something as pure as a Rhodes. then just add a tat of an attack. In this case here, just a tiny bit of a sort of brushed sound. It's almost like one of those little bags of um, sugar, granulated sugar you can put in your coffee. And even if we dial it down, even as subtle as that, it still does something to the sound. And even further down, all the way down here. And sometimes I feel like we can use attack triggers very subtly as well. This is totally a domain I'm exploring with you in real time. This is so new. It's like a new little tiny sonic universe of all these embryonic sounds we can superimpose. Mm -hmm. 